Hey everyone, I've recently made some pretty large improvements to bulk gen. So I thought it'd be a good time to go over some of the um, improvements and use cases for it. So let's get started adding some procedural rivets to this aircraft here. So the first thing we need to do is append bulk gen, which I've already done. Then we can add bulk gen to these edges that I've extracted. And I've, I've just gone ahead and, and inset the faces and extracted out some of these edges to attach bulk gen to. Right, so nothing happens, and that's because we need to set our instance, which will be this object here. And we need to, need to set our alignment object. So right away, it looks pretty crap, and that's okay. Let's dial in the spacing and the scale. And also just to make it look a bit nicer, let's just immediately go ahead and just subdivide our rivet so it doesn't look like a nasty cube. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just go over what I'm actually instancing here. So whenever I'm doing rivet work, I always go with like a, a half cube. You don't have to use this object. You can use nuts, bolts, whatever you want to put on your object. But I just find this half cube with a extruded base is great because it has a nice transition that blends into the object below just like normal rivets would if it's like painted over on an aircraft, for example. Great, let's continue. So the next settings we have is guide controls. So we have shrink wrap guide. And the best way to describe this is to show you this example over here. So if I was to smooth Suzanne, subdivide it, you can see that our bolts are off the surface because Suzanne has shrunk slightly. So what we need to do is shrink wrap guide curves. You tend to just always want to leave this on. There's no reason why you wouldn't want your bolts to always follow the surface. Um, so yeah, that's what that control does. Next, we have the scatter mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick edge here. And let's just subdivide that. So we have three points, one, two, three. I'm going to select these rivets that we have here. I'm just going to copy the network just to quickly get some bolts going over here. And what I'm going to do is change the edge distribution to per vertex. So now we're going to get a vertex, uh, an instance per vertex, and it doesn't have to be an edge. You can, you can just, I'll just turn on snapping here. You can just extrude out vertexes themselves. So this is how you can get full control over where your bolts are placed and you don't have to rely on any procedural distribution. You can, you know, push and pull these around however you like. So you have those two options there. Let's get rid of those for now. Next, we have subdivisions. So unlike smoothing the instance, we have the option of smoothing the guide edges as well. So when you're working with subdivision geometry or geometry which smooths, if you extract out an edge from the low poly and then you smooth it and there's a drastic change in the shape, your bolts no longer follow the geometry, right? So this is the edge that I extruded, that I extracted. You basically want to smooth the edge to follow the subdivided geometry. So I have a control in here for that. So subdivisions under the guide controls will do exactly that. So we bump that up and that's just a way of getting your edges to follow anything with smooth curvature during subdivision. So that's just a useful thing to have. All right, let's move on to our instance controls here. So we've already been over the subdivisions that just smooths out our geometry. Next we have real or instance. So real geometry gives us control over each individual instance. So we can use our shrink wrapping controls later, further on down here. Uh, but if it's an instance, you don't have access to these shrink wrap controls. 
instancing is very fast so if you have thousands and thousands of bolts in a very heavy scene you want it to be fast you might want to set it to instance but in general to get access to all these features down here you might want to just leave it at real geometry next we can flip our instances and this is handy if you're snapping to an object with negative scale or flipped faces for example spacing and scale we've been over we can also add random scale pretty self-explanatory might be nice for adding some breakup let's set that back to one uh, and i'll just turn off subdivisions for now so you can see what's going on here but i can also globally rotate all the instances and we can randomly rotate the instances now random rotation is great for things like hex bolts anything with a geometric profile that you don't want to see repetition of because by default it is aligned to the curve pretty well so any kind of geometric pattern you're going to see a lot of repeating so you might want to take that into consideration when using this setting let's just bump up the subdivisions again we also have the ability to offset the mesh from the surface and let's move on to our instance shrink wrap controls so first things first let's just enable this and nothing happened and the reason why is because the shrink wrap method is set to vertex group and if we come to our original instance mesh we don't have any vertex group here so if I was to just create a vertex group of everything, you'll see that all of our instances have just been flattened to the surface. So this basically gives us control of where the shrink wrap takes place. Generally, you want to just shrink wrap the outer edges, but it's all up to you. I'll just remove these vertices so now our vertex group is just the outside perimeter and you can see that if I come to this rivet here or maybe this one here is a better example you can see that if I toggle that on and off that it's snapping to the surface and keeping it nice and flush which is what you want the next setting or next method is auto detect and you're not going to see any change here because what auto detect is doing it's just automating that process for you so it's nice to have vertex groups so, groups so you can you know artistically dial it in how you want but auto detect will by default take any open edge border edge and create like an internal vertex group for you so because i use rivets so often i've just added this feature just to save time so I don't need to worry about doing vertex groups manually. So we'll just leave it on auto detect for now. Uh, and the next setting here is just the vertex group name. So just to go back to vertex groups, if, if I have called this group under the vertex group, this name here just has to match the name under here. Okay, you just need to keep them in sync for that to work correctly. But yeah, let's switch back to auto detect for now. All right, let's get on to the shading. So we've got smooth shaded, we've got flat shaded. We can set a material here. And lastly, we have these two attributes here. And these two attributes are going to be used to blend the normal between the alignment mesh and your bolts or rivets. So let's come onto the side to showcase what we mean. Let's go into material preview here. And let's just look at a couple of these bolts. And actually, let's come to shading view. And we'll just build this from scratch. I've already built it earlier. So let's create two attribute nodes. And we can just copy and paste these names. So we have normal transfer. Did I do that right? Yep. And we have normal mask. 
it's important to note that with the normal mask attribute, it's essentially the exact same thing as the vertex group that you created under the shrink wrap controls. Or alternatively, if you're using the auto detect shrink wrap method, it's just going to be using the border edge as the mask instead. Let's just move this down here. And let's also create a geometry node here and create a color mix. So we'll plug the normal into the top socket here and we'll plug the vector into the B socket. And we're gonna blend between the two using the normal mask. And now watch what happens when I plug this into the normal. Everything just kind of softens a little bit. You can see there's this hard edge here. You can see there's a hard edge here it'll just kind of blend them nicer. Okay, let's see if we can find some better examples. Yeah, see, it's just, it's a nice touch, you know, that last little bit, because sometimes you can get some artifacts and it's nice to, you know, have that blend going. It just ties the two bits of geometry together quite nicely. You can, however, see that there is some, you know, some artifacting going on. It's very hard to get this perfect. This could be solved by increasing the smoothness of your tag of your alignment mesh underneath, or subdividing your instance again. So we'll just add another subdivision to this, just so you can see what's going on here. But no matter what, if you're spawning rivets on curvature, it's never ever going to be perfect, right? So what you can do is you can ever so slightly increase the surface offset. And that'll just push it off the surface just so you don't get any of that crashing going on. I try to avoid lifting the rivets and bolts off the surface like this. And the reason for it is because it will create shadows and reflections underneath the bolts, which gives away the illusion of them being connected. But if you do need to, if you're getting really bad artifacts and you must lift them, then what I'd recommend is coming into your objects panel under ray visibility, turning off glossy and shadow so that the rivets themselves don't cast any reflections or shadows and they will just be simply floaters and it will maintain the illusion that they're connected even though they're lifted off the surface. Just a cool technique that might come in useful for you. And that is a pretty decent summary of um, bulk gen just to show you how quickly you can get broad scale rivet coverage and have all of this custom control at your fingertips and it saved me a ton of time in production and I'm sure it will for you too. And you can pick it up in the description below on my Gumroad and on Blender Market. Cool. Thanks guys.